I wanted to show you uh, something. I don't I think I have the video, but I have the news article. Uh, the world record was just set a few months ago in Toronto by Patrick Baboumian, vegan. He lifted 1,212 pounds and walked 32 and a half feet with it. New world record. Uh, meat is the last thing that anybody needs to be strong, healthy, and fit. Now, I'm not saying you can't be that way as a meat, dairy, and egg eater. Of course you can. Okay? But you can do the same thing as a vegan as well. So if you go to my website and click on, let's see, Veg Athletes right there. There's Patrick Bohemian right there. And here's the article. Yeah, you just broke the record. So you might want to check that out when you get a chance. So there's Patrick Bagumian. There's this guy right here, 77 years old. 77, he's vegan. <laughs> this is Joel Kirkillis. Uh, he just won the Australian Bodybuilding Championship. He's vegan. Um, Carl Lewis, uh, Edwin Moses, by the way, was a track athlete who was a vegetarian his whole life. Never lost a track and field match, ever. Ever. Vegetarian. Car, uh, that, actually, that's my boy Paul from California. He does eco challenge races. He's crazy, and he just competes to show all the meat eaters to show that vegans can hang. Um, and then Carl Lewis at the oh, there's Mike Danzig, and he's a cage fighter, he's vegan. And Carl Lewis, uh, that that's that's a great story too. Carl Lewis talks about how he never he never got his strength, his energy, until he went vegan. When he won all those gold medals back in the day, that was when he finally went vegan. Uh, keep in mind, complex carbohydrates give you energy and strength. Complex carbohydrates are only found in the plant kingdom, not the animal kingdom. And if you want to, you know, wonder, or if you are wondering whether, you know, you can really be strong and fit as a vegan, look at the animal kingdom. Elephants are vegans. Rhinos, hippos, giraffes, horses, pure muscle. They eat hay and grass. In fact, I was just telling the class at University of Miami, uh, Florida last week, uh, somebody said lions were the kings of the jungle. Now, I'm a Leo, but I have to admit that that's complete and utter bullshit. You put a lion in a room with a hippo, the lion's looking for the way out. Nobody fucks with a hippo. Vegan. <laughs> Vegan. Baddest creature on the planet. Okay? And you do not need meat, dairy, and eggs to be strong and fit and healthy. For all the athletes out there, check out the athlete section. Everything's there in detail. In detail. Yes? What's your opinion on zoos? Animal prisons. Yeah, bad <laughs> idea. Listen, there's no reason to be putting animals on display so we can go see them you know, in, in our local city. Uh, and, 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 and the excuses that the zoos use too, like, oh, you know, we're teaching the kids about the animals. The only thing kids learn at the zoo about the animals is that the zebras are black and white, the giraffes have long necks, and the monkeys have pink butts. That's not education. Diane Fossey. She was an educator. She went and studied the animals in their habitat and brought information back to us. This is how primates act in their own habitat. Okay, so I'm not opposed to learning about animals. I love it too, but I'm not gonna bring them here, put them in an unnatural environment and try to learn something, which you can't learn anyways because it's in an unnatural environment. And they now do unnatural things. Bad idea for the zoos. Now, that doesn't mean everybody that works at the zoo is an evil person. I actually know Ron Kagan, the Detroit Zoo Director. Uh, and he surprised me. I was told back in the day when he first got the gig back in the 90s, he was really cool. He was opposed to hunting and vivisection and fur and circuses and rodeos until I found out that Oscar Mayer was bringing their Wienermobile to the Detroit Zoo to lie to kids and have them sing stupid songs like, I wish I weren't Oscar Mayer Wiener. Really? Talk about the lies, too. I always despise how the meat eaters say that the vegans lie when all the meat eaters ever do is lie. No, 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 no bit of truth ever comes out of the mouth of the meat, dairy, and egg industry, ever. I wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. You mean you wish you were a male pig and had your testicles ripped out at birth, had your teeth cut off at birth, too? Then they fatten you up in six months and hung you upside down and cut you into pieces? That's what the kids wish for? So anyways, I stormed into the Detroit Zoo offices, and a lot of people think I'm radical right now, and I'm not denying that I am, but you should have seen me back in the 90s when I first started. So I busted in, and everybody knew me back then in, uh, in my area. They're like, hey, Gary, hold up. We're not doing anything wrong. I'm like, you bring Ron Kagan out here. You bring him out here right now. I'm like, okay, come on, okay. So they get Ron out here, and Ron proceeds to tell me how much he loves, loves all the animals. 
And I said, you know what, Ron? You talk about how much you love, about, love the animals, but you're letting Oscar Mayer come here and sling pig flesh? And he paused, and he left the room. Now, I was a little confused. I was ready for a fight and a confrontation. I said, is he going to get the police? What's going on? So he comes back five minutes later. He goes, you're right. My lawyers are on the phone right now canceling with them. And again, I was ready for this fight and this confrontation. I'm like, you're damn right you cancel me. <laughs> like, no one ever listens. I'm like, oh my god, he listened to me. So anyways, Ron's a pretty decent guy. He's still got a long way to go. Uh, I guess something else that bothers me a lot about the zoo, and I've told Ron this too a lot, is, is they talk about how much they love the animals, but you can order dead animals at the zoo and eat them at the refreshment area. So what, go look at the live ones in the cage and go eat the dead ones in the box? I'm talking about a perfect place for veganism. Every zoo on this planet should be serving nothing but vegan food if they want to even you know, come across as caring about animals. But I have a zoo section on my website too if you want to read more about that in detail. Yes? Uh, you don't need them, but if you want, you know, by the way, the hot thing right now in the bodybuilding world is brown rice, the brown rice protein supplements. If you don't bleach rice, by, and you don't need the supplement, the powder version, if you want it, it's there, but eat brown rice. You'll get tons of protein. Eat tempeh. Again, one cup of tempeh has more than 30 grams of protein. Add spirulina to your fruit smoothies. Uh, but there's, there's hemp protein, there's soy protein, and there's brown rice protein. And as far as I know, I think you can get those now at every single GNC type of store. And if not, you can definitely find that stuff online. Yes? forever discouraged. I'm a misanthrope. Humans give me no reason to love them or to trust them. Now deep down I know that most people are not evil, which is why I continue on this path of education, teaching people, taking off the blinders. I mean, I didn't know about this for 25 years, so I want to give everyone else the same chance to learn about this and make that change. But I don't have a magical formula for getting rid of the frustration and the stress. I mean, I'm embarrassed to be a human being most of the time. And there, are, listen, as passionate as I am about this, I've given my life to this 17 years. Again, been kicked out of countries, been to jail and all this stuff. There are times I do not feel like talking about it and I just can't even get away from it. And I just drove up today from uh, you know, Michigan up here. We're, I'm staying at the Red Roof Inn over on Market Street. Did you see all the restaurants on that strip? Okay, there's Popeyes, Wendy's, Taco Bell, Hardee's. Uh, it's like every friggin' meat place that the, uh, you can't get away from. I'm watching my sporting events. Just want to watch the game. What do they got to do before the football game? Let's go out to the parking lot, see the guys cooking up all the stuff, the steaks, and the tailgate. Like, Jesus Christ, can I just watch the game without you throwing it in my face? And every other commercial on TV's got to be about meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. And now the Happy Cow commercials, too. And the Laughing Cow cheese, the lies. The lies are what upsets me the most. Um, most people don't know this, but actually, I just took one year off from activism. I was on sabbatical. My first lectures since last September just happened September 10th in Greenville, North Carolina because I have been so frustrated and stressed out that I had to step back for a moment after 17 straight years and recuperate. Fortunately, I got all my energy back, as you saw tonight, my passion's back. I couldn't wait to get back in front of people and teach. It's tough. It's tough living in this world, and it's tough knowing that it probably won't happen in my lifetime. I like to think that animals will be liberated in my lifetime, but realistically I mean, it took 400 years to free blacks in America from slavery 400 years for another human for a group of humans to be free you can see how long this is gonna take it's tough I don't have a magical answer I, I can't I can't really help it finding an avenue for your activism does help though I mean I'm fortunate I, mean, I get to do 200 lectures a year to thousands of people every day I get to turn people into vegans so I'm in, I am encouraged at times 
especially when I have a great lecture. And most of my lectures, by the way, do not turn into Jerry Springer shows. Uh, sadly, 15 to 20 out of 200 do turn into those Jerry Springer type of shows, but the rest are wonderful without any negative comments whatsoever. So I can see that change can happen. I found my path, I found my avenue. If you are an activist and you are frustrated, you gotta find a better avenue to teach, you know, to, to, to make positive change. Which countries are you then? Uh, <laughs> Canada threw me out. That's because in 1997, I went to a mink concentration camp, a fur farm in Blenheim, Ontario, and opened up the cages for 1,542 mink. Uh, two years later, during my trial, found guilty. Uh, 77 days into a six month sentence, they kicked me out of Canada, made me persona non grata. Now, I can understand why they did it. I don't agree with it, of course, because if I went to Canada and I wanted to capture mink, put them in a little six by eight inch cage, if I wanted to drive them insane from that confinement, just so you know, every mink and every fur from on this planet sits there and goes like this in their cage. It's called screw neck. They're going crazy. Like the elephants in the circus who sway back and forth, mink have a neck a neck rotation. Uh, if I wanted to do that and take them out of the cage and snap their neck against my knee, which is the standard method of death for minks, I'd be welcome. Well, they'd love me in Canada. I'd be the shit. Hey, you Rossi, come on down. But if I want to stop that cruelty, they don't ever come back to our country ever again. Come around here spreading compassion like that, doing nice things for other beings. We live in a really messed up world, as you can tell. And the United Kingdom threw me out. That's four countries. That's Britain, uh, Northern Ireland, Wales, and Scotland. And as Marion mentioned at the beginning of the speech, what's even odd about that is I never set foot in the United Kingdom. I've never even planned on going there. They preemptively threw me out. <laughs> hey, you're asking me thinking about coming here and talking about this compassion stuff for animals. Don't even think about it. You're not getting through our borders. But if I wanted to travel to the United Kingdom, if I didn't care, about equality and justice and freedom. If I said, hey, let's kill animals like this, it's more efficient, and let's cook their dead bodies like this. Boy, but come on now, man, tell us about it. But if you want to travel the world, travel the country, and talk about compassion to animals in this day and age, you're labeled a terrorist. These countries have labeled me a terrorist, the tofu terrorist. <laughs> you guys all scared? <laughs> I thought Prince Charles was a vegetarian. Not that I know of, but if you got some information, let me know. I don't think so. <laughs> I How doubt that. Organics, probably. Yeah. And keep in mind, organic has nothing to do with ethics. And while it might give you a better chance at being healthy, I'll admit to that, meat itself is unhealthy. So you might reduce you know, chemical intake by buying organic, but you haven't eliminated animal protein, which is the main cause of our diseases, animal protein itself. You haven't eliminated cholesterol, saturated fat, trans fatty acids, excessive amounts of fat, and all that stuff that are found in animal products. Don't be duped by that organic stuff. 